James Richard Crawford, AC, Judge of the International Court of Justice. Judge Crawford died on the 31st of May 2021 at the age of 72. And with his passing, our nation has lost one of its most influential scholars and jurists on the international stage. I note there was a flood of tributes to the man and his work when news of his passing became public. At the outset, I tender my profound sympathies to his family and many friends throughout the Australian and international community, as well as the many people who have been influenced by his scholarship and jurisprudence. I have the pleasure of knowing one of his daughters, Rebecca Huntley, whose incisive mind gives some hint of her kin. James Crawford was educated locally at Brighton High School, as it was then known, and the University of Adelaide. After completing his doctorate in international law at Oxford, Judge Crawford returned to Adelaide to launch an academic career as a lecturer in international and constitutional law. This, in turn, took him to distinguished appointments at Sydney University and then Cambridge. Judge Crawford loved the intellectual rigour of academic life, but he was not satisfied with it. He knew that theory was nothing without application, and he determined, was determined that his career would be uncloistered. He wrote landmark texts, and most notably the creation of states in international law, setting out the most elemental and profound concepts underpinning international jurisprudence, such as what is a state and what does it mean to have sovereignty. And he took that work a giant leap further when he was commissioned to the UN International Law Commission to write the Articles on Responsibility of States for Internationally Wrongful Acts, a project which had eluded predecessors for some five decades, and he completed in five years. These articles provide the framework for state accountability and consequences for breaches in international law. It's little wonder that in its obituary, the Cambridge Law Faculty described him as a towering figure in international law whose work is unparalleled. As an advocate, James Crawford served as senior counsel, counsel or co-counsel in some 30 contentious and advisory proceedings before the court. These internationally significant cases, including representing Australia against Portugal in the East Timor case, the legality of Kosovo's unilateral declaration of independence and the legal consequences of the construction of the wall in the occupied Palestinian territory. My colleague, the Honourable Mark Dreyfus, QCMP, recalled that as Attorney General he had the great fortune to work with James Crawford preparing for and arguing Australia's successful case against Japan's unlawful whaling program before the Court of Justice in July 2013. Mr Dreyfus described Judge Crawford as one of Australia's finest ever legal minds. In 2015, James Crawford commenced his tenure as one of the International Court of Justice's 15 judges. He was the only the second Australian to have ever been elected to the court and the first for nearly 50 years. And he approached this work following the dictum that has served him throughout his career, committed to international law that is an open system a practical tool for, tool for the resolution of apparently intractable international problems. Crawford's work broke new ground at home and abroad, and he is most famous for his work in international law. But he was also the commissioner in charge of a 1986 report by the Australian Law Reform Commission on the recognition of Aboriginal customary laws. That report is now considered one of the foundations of the Mabo decision that recognised native title. I was moved to read, read Judge Crawford's work that from a personal point of view, it is the biggest piece of work I've ever done. It reminds us that there is no greater contribution to make to this country than to our national reconciliation. And it underscores how both on our shores and abroad, James Crawford de dedicated his life's work to helping shape an open and fair system of laws to serve our common humanity. And I end by expressing again my deepest sympathy to Rebecca and to all of Judge Crawford's family and friends.